Right then, this is a car that you've probably seen, but we've never done a video on. So what this used to be was Danny's A7, and then what he did was he realised it needed loads of work and put it up for sale, but didn't tell Scott it needed loads of work. So Scott bought it off him, which I'm not sure if it's a good idea to sell your boss a car that needs loads of work, but he did. He got top money for it. And that's what exactly that's why he's filming this now because at last second he's bottled it and didn't want to do this video because he felt guilty that were his words not mine i think if scott had his way he'd have bought the bi turbo a7 but danny was selling this it went right sort of money at right sort of time scott was just at a point where i think he'd had to borrow somebody's car that he didn't want to borrow to go home once because all his other cars were dead so he just bought it off danny this is the single turbo 272 horsepower the turbo's the same all the way from like the 205s or whatever it is, all the way through to the 272. But that don't matter because we've got the big turbos if we wanted to go crazy. Scott's not done that. Just got the usual stuff that we do to these to make them sound better. Intercooler, remap, doing 310 horsepower, something like that. Have we even had it on Dyna? Yeah, it did 320, I think. 320, oh yeah, 320. It's a strong one, but this has all happened years ago, and this isn't why we're doing this video, it's gone beyond what this video started at. But, got the Bentley wheels, Bentley brakes, which, a little bit of machining to get them to fit. I've done a little bit of machining whenever I borrow it on the, on the outsides at wheels, and uh, it's on air ride as well, so we'll have a look what that looks like. We've been all over in this, we went to Belgium in it, and, it is nice for every one of your cars to be fire breathing, rip snorting, all singing, all dancing, but we just get us kicks on the track and drive pretty steady. I drive steady on road anyway, not too crazy. I've got kids. Scott sometimes sets his brakes on fire on a morning, but it is what it is. So the main reason this is in here is because this, the engine, is not in good fettle anymore. It seems to be a common problem. We'll put a clip up of what it sounds like because it only does it once when it's cold. But all of this stuff needs changing. So we think we've got an issue with the timing chain. Not sure if the chains stretch or whatever, not 100% sure on that one. We'll have to have a look. I think there's differences all all across the board. This has got to the point now where Scott's missus is noticing it when he fires it up in the morning, asking what that horrible noise is from his car. So it's about time we did it. And because we're not very prepared, even though this has been like getting kicked out road for probably the last three months now, here is the clutch and flywheel that we're gonna swap. I'm over here. The clutch and flywheel we're gonna swap because you might as well take the gearbox off to do it. You can do it one or two ways, take the engine out, drop it down and do it, or take the gearbox out and just do it up there with all that room. So while it's out, we're gonna do the, the flywheel. That's not really making any noises yet, and I think that's original. And the clutch does slip a little bit randomly doing weird stuff, mainly when you're setting off, so it's probably worn out. I've tried adapting it and stuff and it's never worked. So we'll get that sorted. Um, and then beyond that, I don't think they're all else we're doing, were they? No. We'll watch Paul doing it. I think it's going to be a two day job to get this done. A lot of work. You can see there's a lot of bits. You've just had to slacken all them bolts up and tighten them back up. In front of you, it'd take a while. So definitely when some of these will be hidden away to the point where you can't get to them. So we'll bring you along for this journey and see how much of this Paul actually records because he's well known for not turning cameras on or having them looking at that wall when he's over there doing something else. So anyway, we'll let him do this, and then Paul, quicker Paul gets this done, quicker he can start doing fun stuff and working on race cars, so good incentive, really.
So, we've just caught this as Paul's took the gearbox and the casings off and everything and started having a little poke around. So, it's all there, which is good. There's not like massive pieces missing. But, this here just comes off, watch. That just comes off. Because all this has been damaged. So that's how it should look. So you can see the sides have been chiseled away. So that's one of the problems. The other problem that I talked about the plate, which you can't buy. So we've had this made here. This, that's the plate behind that there. So that's where that plate play is coming from. So when we take that off, there'll be some wear in that. All this is caused by this here. I don't know if you can. That, although now there's oil stuff, there's no oil pressure behind it. The time when this makes the most noise is first start. So that must be draining a bit of oil out, losing its tension. So when you first start it up and then just before you give it a rev, all this is slack, which has allowed that to move, this to wear. So it, it's, it's all happened anyway. We've just been talking about it. This car's 120 odd thousand mile, which we should have put it up earlier on. And it's been doing it for a while. So it's probably done 10,000 mile like this. So it has progressively got worse. Paul's A4, that's done 190,000 now and probably 50,000 miles ago. He fired it up once and heard a funny noise, banged a load of engine flush and stuff like that. I think he did it two or three times. And that's had no problem since, and it's like 195 now. So if you catch it early enough, you don't need to do all this, I, I think. Maybe at some point, Paul's gonna just explode. But it all starts from this little piece here. But if you get to the point where you're gonna change that, you might as well change all of this stuff. So it is crap, very complicated. I think timing belts are better. But I don't know whether it's, if you change the oil every 6,000 mile in these, this would last and your engine would be in better health anyway. I don't know, but people didn't change the oil for probably 20,000 mile in PD engines and it makes no difference to your cam belt. So, but it kills your cams. So six and two threes, but all this is down to the long life servicing. The oil itself, the long life oil, good oil, expensive oil, but we're trying to extend it too long. That is the main issue here. I think I've been told by a lot of people that do oil analysis and stuff that five, six, maybe 7,000 miles. Obviously, long runs as well, your oil's done. So really, some people be changing oil every couple of months. But anyway, let Paul get this back together, see how things go on. Might do another few little bits in between. We'll see. Watch the next video if you want to see what bits we're doing while we're doing this. I'm sure you'll be able to spot them. But yeah, see how Paul gets on. So this has escalated as well. The plate on the other side that we thought were worn wasn't worn. But what were worn for? Uh, yeah. It's the... It's just pushing off? Yeah, it's coming off. We'll just bring that yeah. back on and tack it on? Yeah, press it back on, weld it on. And put the good on. So, yeah, balance yeah. shaft problems. The V6 is not immune, it seems. Mm.
Well, it ran, it did not rattle. <laughs> so, as you can hear from the video Paul's just done, it runs, no silly ticking noises or anything like that, and that was completely dry. It's been sat here for basically two weeks now because we've just been that busy. Um, not sure exactly how many hours I'm going to be charging out for this job, so we'll probably put that up now. Um, there's a lot of bits to go in this, a lot of bits that you can only get genuine as well, so it is quite an expensive job, but it needs doing if you're rattling about. It's got to be sorted. Obviously, this ended up being a lot of work with the front and the back off. Um, but yeah, it's done now. So the next step or the next thing for this car is the tuning. So whether that's edited and out there before the timing chain or after, I'm not too sure how it's going to go. But stick around for the next video on the A7. Hopefully, it's going to be big powers. Mm -hmm.